Um, yes, it is a two-way street. That at Googleplex was uh, did evolve from uh, the universities. Some of the some of the pr principles and practices that they do uh, have to do with their education, and that they uh, pro their proponents of have to do with uh, their education, how they learned, and how students learn. And universities really taught them that more than them teaching universities that. But universities need to take the experience of again. The, student, the students being able to work together and, and the students being able to have the freedom to uh, work within their, their own interests, that it's not about just teaching someone or requiring someone to do a particular task. You have to give them the opportunity to, to bring something to that, and they will surprise you every time. There's not a quick fix to these things. This is it. This requires, uh, you know, an intellectual conversations about how each campus could work. Each campus has a story to tell. I mean, each campus is a community. The story keeps changing because the community keeps changing. But there's still there are these overriding stories that can be told. And uh, defining that, it's like a it's like a company defining what their core values are. It's not a quick fix to that. I mean, you you have to really Think about where you want the company to go, where you, where you think it's going to go, and how you best think it could get there. And why do you do what you do? Not just how do we do it and what we do, but why do we do it? So that, that is a, uh, a complicated conversation. So there are no real quick fixes, but the conversation needs to start, and then you get, you get solutions from those, uh, those discussions. First of all, they're, they're progressive enough to have someone like myself come and speak with them. Uh, so they're very open to what's going on in the rest of the world. And not only that, we have, um, uh, there was an environment that I was taken to in, in Stockholm, at the University of Stockholm, which um, took two old buildings and tied it together as a, with the library. It was all uh, a glass room. But uh, it was it was a library space, very impressive. And one of the things that was impressive about it it was it wasn't just it wasn't a quiet, hushed tone library. It was an open open space, and the students obviously loved it. And they were they were talking and collaborating and spending time together. And that's that's really what you need to really generate true knowledge environments is to take to not just take the the engineering building and make it work well, or the philosophy building and make it work well, but to to figure out a way to get the philosophy students and the engineering students together. Because it's about the community of students, universities. They're not just bricks and mortar and, and nice circulation paths. It's about the community of the students, and the students change every year. That is the culture evolving. So you have to design and think about, uh, in your architecture, you have to think about how you can support that community, that, this new community of students, which is constantly changing. And sometimes buildings don't like to change. Interesting problem, but it seems that uh, Sweden is coping quite well with it.